Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be focusing on the topic manuscripts. This is one of the foundation topics in this course and it is a topic that is always confusing for some teachers and students alike. Now I will be on a journey to go in depth with this topic and I hope you follow me by subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss any video once it is out on this topic. Now before we go into typing this document and everything that it entails, we first need to know what it is. A manuscript is an original document written by hand or typewritten work of an author that is used to prepare mailable or printable copy of the document. It may contain abbreviations that must be spelt out or correction symbols, among other things. Now, as it relates to the layout of the manuscript, there are three different layouts of a manuscript. A manuscript is said to be unbound, and that is the most popular one. Left bound or top bound. Now, when I speak of bound, I'm speaking about binding. Right, so an unbound manuscript is a manuscript that is not binded at all. A left bound manuscript is one that is binded on the left side, right? Um, maybe you could picture a, a book, right, being binded from the left and you open it, etc. Right, and a top bound manuscript is one that is binded from the top, so you have to fold, you have to lift it and o up and over, right? So that's what it means as it relates to the various layouts of the manuscript. Now we're going to take a brief look at the various margins that goes with each of these layouts. I have here page one for the unbound, left bone and top bone manuscript. What is the top, left, right and bottom margin? Then I have for page two. What I will normally say to persons is that all you need to know is the margin for the unbound manuscript, right? Once you know the margin for the unbound manuscript, all you need to do is to add 0.5 to the left if you're doing a left bound manuscript or 0.5 to the top if you're doing a top bound manuscript. I have here the standard margin as stated. You see where, for example, I have left bone 1.5 or 2 inches right top bone 2 or 2.5 but for me i just go with the unbound minus um the unbound margin once i know that right or i'll pass it on to my students i just tell them to add 0.5 to the top or to the left if that is the one that the question asks about so for the unbound manuscript page one is the top is 1.5 the left right and bottom is one inch right so if i was doing a left bow manuscript then i would add to the left 1.5 so i'll keep my the top margin to be 1.5 the right and the bottom to be one and i will just add 0.5 to the left so now i'll have the margin being 1.5 top 1.5 left right and bottom one inch i'm following the unbound margin remember that you know, if I'm doing a top bone manuscript, right, for the unbound, it is 1.5. So if I add 0.5 to that, my top bone manuscript would be 2 inches. And then I will keep my left, right, and bottom margin at 1 inch. Know that there are others that are there, but that is a standard that the subject says, but I tell you what I do. All right. Now for page 2, the unbound manuscript is 1 inch all around for page 2. So if I was doing a left bound manuscript, all I need to do is to just add 0.5 to the left. If I'm doing a top bound manuscript, I'll just add 0.5 to the top. So I'll get 1.5. And that is how I do the margins for the left and the top bone following what the unbound margin says. All right? I'm going to have a video coming out that is going to go through in Microsoft Word how we go about setting our page 1 and page 2 margins bearing these um, layouts in mind so please look out for that please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss when this video comes out now we're going to look at the various headings in a manuscript 
a manuscript has various headings right we have something known as the main heading which is the the the, the top of the manuscript what the manuscript is about we have the subheading not all manuscripts will have a subheading right and we have our shoulder headings we have paragraph headings and we have something known as a side or a marginal heading all right greater details are said about these right in other videos then we have paragraphs now paragraphs in a manuscript may be formatted using any of the following styles you have blocked paragraph which consists of the um the paragraphs being flushed to the left margin you have something known as an indented paragraph where the first line of the paragraph goes in at 0 0.5 inches and you have something known as a hanging paragraph where all the paragraphs are the except for the first line of paragraph all the other lines are indented at 0 0.5 inches now, the final thing that we're going to look at as it relates to manuscripts in this video are some of the rules that we should follow when we are typing manuscripts. We need to determine first and foremost the layout that is required for the document and set our margins accordingly before we start our typing. The question will tell you the type of layout, whether it should be a left bone or a top bone manuscript or unbound but if the question does not tell you the layout by default it would be an unbound manuscript all right now there should be a double space between the main heading and the subheading there should be a triple space between the subheading and the body and when i speak of body i'm talking about the rest of the document right um the main heading should be typed in spaced capitals and i i place this word here in space capital for you to get an idea of what i'm talking about space capital is simply one space between letters and three spaces between words right or in closed capitals or as directed by the question sometimes the, although this is the standard for a main heading sometimes the question does not follow the protocol all right and because you like your mark you just have to do what the question says now next we're going to look at the subheading the subheading should be typed in something known as title case or we refer to it as initial caps or any caps right now the subheading is always in title case in initial caps and underline so once you type a subheading in initial caps it should always be underlined and a new thing that um, I see them doing now is that it can be initial caps and bold. So if you do not use it on the line, it can also be bold. But one of the two should be done to it. Right? Now the body of the manuscript is typed in double line spacing. And this must be done consistent with the style of the document. Whether it's blocked or indented style or as instructed by the question. There should be a triple space between paragraphs. If the block style is used and a double or triple space between paragraphs if the indented style is used now we should also ensure that when we are doing the manuscript we end the first page with a whole paragraph sometimes it can't be ended with a whole paragraph so we need to ensure that at least the first two lines of the new paragraph or at a point with the last two lines of paragraph to carry forward to the next page right this is important because you get marks for how you end your first page and start your new page okay now we also need to ensure that our continuation page is numbered it should start at page two and the numeral for the page along with the heading of the document should be typed at the top of the page for the unbound or left bound style the page number is inserted at the left or center of the page at either the top or bottom margin for the top bound style the page is numbered at the bottom of the page at the center or left of the page only so we do not put anything at the top of the page for the top bound manuscript all right and finally we should ensure that we follow the various rules for typing inset text 
numerations, footnotes, and endnotes. Well, that's it for the video today, guys. Um, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel and help me to get this information out to other persons who may need it for such a time as this. And also, so that you can always be in tune to what is happening in EDPM so that you can get your best grade from here on out. Do enjoy the rest of your day and see you in my next video.